Hello, are you able to see images in your mind when you close your eyes? If you are, then stick around to see why some of us can't and how it may affect us. If you can't see images, then you may or may not have already seen many videos explaining the term aphantasia. Aphantasia relates to the mind's eye, or how I like to call it, the mind's computer screen. The human body is very complex and the brain is no exception. It helps us to experience the world via imagination, emotion and memory. There is no catch-all explanation for aphantasia because like with most things that are to do with the human body, everything is on a spectrum. We all know that we have five senses. The senses we use to navigate the world. However, there is a set of mind-created senses that people can recreate without the need of the physical senses – eyes, ears, mouth, etc. Let's start with a simple analogy. When we close our eyes, let's pretend that we have access to an internal computer screen and speakers. We'll ignore smell, taste and touch for now. Some people have access to all these internal senses and can recreate the sensations by just thinking about them. Others may only have access to a couple. The resolution of the experience of these internal senses may also vary in terms of quality. Take for instance our internal computer screen. Some people can imagine detailed, colourful 2D images. Others may be able to have 3D objects that can be manipulated. Others may just have an outline or black and white images. Close your eyes and imagine an apple. What do you see? What do you sense? Do you see it on a table or on a tree? Is it green or red? Is it in black and white? Maybe it's just an outline. Or do you just see blackness? The same can be said for sound. Musicians have the ability to create melodies and music in their mind, change the pitch, slow the music down and speed it up again. In essence, everyone has varying degrees in which they can experience these internal senses. For some, who have extremely vivid senses in which they can manipulate images and sound, this also has a term, hyperphantasia. Now, let's come back to the term aphantasia. The best way to explain from my own perspective is to use the analogy of the computer screen in the mind again. For some reason, the graphics card and sound card have had their outputs disabled. This also includes the other senses. However, I know information is going to these graphics and sound cards because I can almost sense the information happening but just can't bring it to the screen or speakers. I can remember facts and details about things and memories and there is some sort of awareness of a picture but it's stuck behind a wall. Interestingly, the screen and speakers work perfectly when I'm dreaming. My dreams are vivid but I forget them very quickly as soon as I wake up. This is not to say that this is true for everyone. As mentioned, the whole sense experience is on a spectrum. Here's a bit of history related to aphantasia. How long have we known that some people lack internal senses? Well, it was first described by Sir Francis Galton in 1880 but remained largely neglected until Dr. Adam Zeman, a cognitive neurologist at the University of Exeter in England, began his work in the early 2000s and coined the name from the Greek word phantasia, which means imagination. So, it's only been formally studied this century. Worldwide, this condition affects 2 to 3% of the population, but the figure is probably higher as so many people may be unaware of aphantasia. I only found out that I had aphantasia a couple of years ago, so it's been a revelation to understand why certain things in my life have been the way they are. Here are some amusing revelations. Number one, I never enjoyed reading fiction. It was always so boring. No images of the scene or characters were forthcoming. The experience was always a chore. However, I do enjoy reading non-fiction. I'm drawn to reading about abstract ideas and theories. Number two, I also never understood how the book could be better than the movie. 
The movie has pictures. It has fully fleshed characters and special effects. The book is just words. Number three, on the topic of movies, why were people recalling their memories as clear flashbacks? That's unrealistic. People don't recall memories like that. And the idea of memory implants in sci-fi movies was perplexing. How would they recall them so vividly? Funnily enough, all my favorite movies feature memory implants. Blade Runner, Total Recall, Dark City, Matrix, and Inception. Number four, I couldn't understand how people were able to visualize on something in group meditation. What were the other people doing? I once told a Buddhist monk that I literally fell asleep through the practice. And number five, counting sheep to fall asleep was a non-starter. I just couldn't see the sheep. As mentioned before, there is not one type of aphantasia, it's on a spectrum. Many people don't feel hindered by it, although others believe they failed courses in school because of it. For me, the saddest part is knowing that I can't recall in pictures the special days of my life, such as my wedding day and when my son was born. Knowing that I lack the ability makes me quite jealous. Thank goodness for photographs and video. Okay, let's go on to some positives. Having aphantasia does not mean that you lack creativity. Many famous creative people have it, including Ed Catmull, co-founder of Pixar, Richard Herring, the British comedian and podcaster, Penn Gillette, the American magician and television personality, and many more. So what are the advantages? Here are a few. Number one, I'm less affected by scary stories since I cannot visualize them. So after watching a scary movie, I won't see the images again and can go to sleep with ease. Number two, I fall asleep at night very quickly. Number three, I don't get grossed out by mentioning disgusting things at the dinner table. People can talk about a squashed bug with pus oozing out of it and I can happily carry on eating my lasagna. Number four, it probably contributes to my lack of tendency to live in the past or harbor regret. Is there a cure? Not at the moment, and scientists do not yet know the exact cause of aphantasia. How to move forward. Check for yourself with the VVIQ, the Vividness of Visual Imagery Questionnaire. You can also join the Aphantasia Network and Facebook group. All links provided in the description. Please leave a comment below if you want to ask or comment on the topics discussed.